Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and welcome to a new episode. It has been requested and requested of me to cover the digestibility, bioavailability, and absorption of plant protein sources. Especially since the Hodge twins recently mentioned the inferior absorption of plant-based proteins. So here is the answer to that collective call, and it will be comprehensive as fuck, pulling directly from actual papers in the biomedical literature, uh, not uh, just articles or blogs. Uh, no bodybuilding.com nonsense and no YouTube personality bro science. So let's get right into this. I'll be exploring very popular vegan protein sources in this video, starting with the ever-popular soy. When the PDC-AAS scale is used, or the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, soy protein is found to be equivalent to some animal proteins like milk and eggs, with a score of 1, or the highest possible rating, which actually puts it at 0.08 points above beef, which has a score of 0.92. And just for a little background, the PDC-AAS method has been adopted as the preferred method for measurement of protein value in human nutrition. And before anyone expresses concerns over soy and their hormones, research demonstrates that soy does not exert feminizing effects on men, even at intake levels higher than those seen in Asian populations. Furthermore, a peer-reviewed meta-analysis of a total of 51 treatment groups, 15 of which were placebo-controlled, demonstrates that neither soy foods nor or isoflavone supplements alter measures of bioavailable testosterone concentrations in men. And I covered soy in great detail in a previous episode which I will link below. Similarly, the grains quinoa and amaranth are both ranked on the same level as soy when it comes to amino acid profile and protein quality, and directly comparable to animal protein sources. Which makes them equally awesome protein sources for vegans to consider as well. However, protein from plant sources such as wheat or some legumes, not including soy, are indeed lower in some amino acids compared to animal proteins, but this isn't an issue if you are eating a variety of plant-based protein sources and consuming enough total calories. You gotta keep things in context. Moving along, let's quickly look at the research on another popular vegan protein option, Lentils. Research has shown that lentil-based high-protein diets are just as effective as their animal-based counterparts when it comes to nitrogen absorption and nitrogen balance, even in a serious medical scenario such as nutritionally rehabilitating malnourished children. Not to mention, lentils are highly cost-effective. Moving away from whole foods, let's examine the effectiveness of a few popular plant-based protein powders when compared to the ubiquitous whey. In a paper published in 2013 in the Nutrition Journal, it was determined that whey and rice protein both equally improve body composition and exercise performance. Literally, there is no fucking difference between consuming rice protein or consuming whey protein when it comes to results. In a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trial published in 2015 in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, there were no differences noted between the consumption of pea protein and whey protein when it comes to strength gains and muscular growth. And by the end of a 12-week study on resistance-trained subjects, there was no significant difference noted in lean muscle gains between soy isolate, a soy and a whey blend, or a whey blend. The soy concentrate, however, did slightly underperform compared to the others, so the takeaway is to go with a soy isolate as an alternative to whey, not concentrate. I personally use a soy isolate, pea isolate, and rice concentrate blend, which rivals the amino acid profile and overall protein content of whey. If you'd like to learn more about creating that blend, please visit the link in the description for a free PDF. However, to play devil's advocate, I did search the PubMed databases for papers regarding any poor bioavailability aspects of plant proteins, and I found a broadly inclusive paper. This paper did demonstrate anywhere from a 23 to 50 percent lower amino acid digestibility in protein quality from particular plant sources like legumes and cereals, and this was specifically due to inherent anti-nutrient content. Keep in mind that anti-nutrients can be cooked, sprouted, or fermented out of foods to enhance their protein digestibility, so these results may have been different had the researchers added that as a control. Uh, and I never advocate raw diets anyway. I've said from time and time again uh, on this channel that cooking enhances nutrient absorption, uh, and this is why it pays to go by the research and not fads or anecdotes. Uh, it's also worth noting that unlike the lentil and soy papers, which I previously discussed, both of which are also legumes, by the way, uh, this paper only examined digestibility in non-human subjects, uh, such as rats, poultry, and pigs. Uh, different species can and do have different nutritional needs, 
and digestive abilities. Just because humans can do well consuming a particular food does not imply that other animals will, which is why appeals to nature are foolish, like when a meat eater tries to argue that because lions consume flesh, that it is somehow justifies them doing the same thing, that it somehow implies a cross-species requirement. And this isn't just a theory, this is actually supported by published research and statements specifically regarding human nutrition. Research data indicates that all essential and non-essential amino acids can be supplied by plant food sources alone, so long as a variety of foods are consumed and energy intake is adequate. Bear that in mind. You need to ensure that you're eating enough for your health and goals. And this is in line with the official published statement by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which states that well-planned vegan diets are healthful and nutritionally adequate for all stages of life, including athletes. So ultimately, how much protein do I recommend for those looking to build muscle as a vegan? Well, as I've mentioned, before, my recommendations are based on the larger body of research, not just one paper. According to the International Society of Sports Nutrition, 1.4 to 2 grams per kilogram per day is the protein intake range to target for physically active individuals. Furthermore, that range is not only safe, but may improve the training adaptations to exercise. However, according to the book Essentials of Strength, Training, and Conditioning developed by the National Strength and Conditioning Association, or the NSCA, athletes consuming a vegan diet may require more than 2 grams per kilogram of body weight. But just how much more? Dr. Susan Kleiner, who founded High Performance Nutrition, a service that has worked with numerous professional sports teams as well as Olympians and other elite athletes, suggests that vegans should take an additional 10% more protein above their calculated needs per day to ensure that their diets are providing for all the essential amino acids they require, as this will also account for any possible digestibility differences from some plant sources. Taking all of this into account, I recommend that vegans interested in building or maintaining muscle consume no less than one gram uh, per pound of lean body weight per day in protein. And I emphasize lean body weight, not total. Which is precisely what I recommend to my clients at the Vegan Muscle Academy, a service which I will link below. For a guy who weighs 170 pounds uh, lean body weight, that's only 16 more grams of protein per day, or 64 additional calories. Or basically one additional cup of cooked fucking black beans. That's just 16 grams of extra protein to do your part in fighting the exploitation, suffering, and slaughter of demonstratively proven sentient life. That's just 16 grams of extra protein to do your part in fighting a leading cause of environmental devastation. And the positive effects of a vegan diet have been further supported by a paper just published in the Journal of the National Academy of Sciences, which demonstrates with hard figures the positive changes going vegan can have on health, the environment, and the economy. So is that tiny bit of extra protein really a lot to ask? I guess maybe if you're a selfish cunt it is. Uh, not just a selfish cunt, but a dumb cunt too, because you're also shooting yourself in the foot by consuming animal products. The growing body of research has demonstrated that consuming protein from plants rather than animal sources may in fact be one of the reasons why vegetarians generally have lower risks of being overweight, suffering from obesity, and suffering from chronic disease. Moreover, a number of studies demonstrates that a higher intake of animal protein in infants and early childhood may increase the risk of being overweight and suffering obesity in later life, and that meat eaters have the highest body mass index and vegans the lowest. Furthermore, a number of studies demonstrates that the consumption of plant protein lowers blood pressure, the risk of type 2 diabetes, and the risk of coronary artery disease in healthy men. This was compared to animal protein. Even furthermore, after a review of 800 different studies, the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer have concluded that processed meats are a group 1 carcinogen to humans, and that red meats may be a group 2A carcinogen to humans. So it isn't just the animals, the environment, or the economy that are at risk, but also your fucking health. And that is all very well documented. But back to the main point, it is simply ignorant and thoroughly unsupported by the body of research to claim that a vegan diet is not ample enough for an athlete's needs. And that includes those whose aim is to build muscle and strength and be competitive. And on that note, it is also equally ignorant to take nutrition advice from people who obviously leave their brains hanging out. Just because someone looks good does not mean that they are healthy. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and share it. I got so many fucking requests for this, so obviously it's a much-needed topic. And if you're a butthurt troll, feel free to whine and leave insulting comments or give me downvotes. The irony is, is that uh, even negative interaction helps my videos reach even more people, so you're actually doing me unintentional favors. Also, subscribe to my channel to keep on top of the weekly updates. Otherwise, keep making those ethical fucking